This lesson is about significant figures called sig figs or sig digs for a significant digit. The first part of significant digits is determining how many digits are significant. There are several rules that dictate which digits are significant, but they can all be boiled down into a very simple shortcut that I'd like to demonstrate here. In the box and dot method, you first determine the leftmost and rightmost non-zero digit, some number, any numbers, between 1 and 9. Then use those as anchors to draw a box to incorporate all the numbers in between, regardless of whether or not they are zeros or non-zero digits. And then you count the number of digits within the box, and those are your significant digits. In this example, there are 5. In the next example, 4,000, you draw a box around the non-zero digits. There's only one non-zero digit, the 4. So in this case, the zeros are not significant, and the answer is there is one significant digit. Now this example, the next example, shows where the dot comes in. So we draw a box around our non-zero digit, and then we identify that there is a dot present right here. Once we identify that there is a dot present, the next part of the technique is to draw a box around any numerals that are to the right of the rightmost digit already boxed. So we've already boxed in the 5. So now we continue to the right of that and box in any additional digits and then count all the numbers within the boxes. So in this example there are three significant digits. Let's continue with some more examples demonstrating our box and dot method of determining significant digits. In our first example we would find our non-zero digits 9 and 1, put a box around those, determine that there is in fact a dot present here, and then proceed to draw a box around any numerals to the right of the numerals already boxed in. In this case, there are none. So we simply count the numerals within the box. In this case, there are two. Next example, 1.0030. Our leftmost and rightmost non-significant digits are the 1 and the 3, so we include those within a box. There is, in fact, a dot. Even though it's within the box, that does not change the rule. So we include all numbers to the right of the existing box and count the numbers within the boxes. In this example, there are a total of five significant figures. Even with scientific notation, we can determine the number of significant digits using the same method. But it only applies to the preceding number, not the exponent. So we'll draw a box around our non-zero digits, the 1 and the 7. We will identify the dot, even though it's within the box. We will include all numbers to the right of the numerals already boxed in, and count our numbers. In this case, there are three significant digits. And finally, 620 with a decimal. So we box the 6 and the 2. We acknowledge the, the dot. And then we continue to box everything to the right of the numbers already boxed and count our significant digits. And in this example, there are three significant digits. 
The significant figures are important in chemistry and physics because they indicate the precision of the measurement. Depending on the tool used to make the measurement determines the number of decimal places that the data can be reported. If, for example, I have a beaker with liquid in it that has gradations of 50 and 100, and the liquid falls somewhere between the 50 and the 100, then I will have to estimate the last digit. So if I gauge how far between the 50 and the 100 that liquid lies, I might say that it is 60 milliliters. The only measurement that I can give with some certainty is the 6. The zero is a gross estimation. If, on the other hand, I have a container with smaller gradations and even submarkings, with a lot more certainty I can report the volume of liquid, in this case 1.4, since it falls just beneath the 1.5 measurement of my instrument. So now I have more precise data that I can report. When adding or subtracting numbers in science, your data, the rule is that the number with the least number of decimal places is your least accurate. And your data can never be, your, your answer can never be more precise than your original data. In the first example, 1.3, that is only one decimal place. So that, our answer will have to match that and have one decimal place. So even though when I add these, I get an answer of 5.55, my reported answer will have to be 5.6. I would have to round the first decimal place in order to match my given information. The number to the right of that is a 5 rounding my 5 up to a 6. Same thing in subtracting. When I'm subtracting 6.5 from 9, the 9 has no decimal places. Therefore, even though my answer here is 2.5, I will have to round and eliminate the decimal place and report 3 as my final answer. When multiplying and dividing, the rule is a little different. Instead of being based on the number of decimal places, it's based on the total number of significant digits. In our first example, 3.0 is two significant digits, whereas the numeral 1 is only one significant digit. So our final answer will have to be reported to one significant digit. Therefore, the answer will be 3. In our division example, the same rule applies we have a digit with one significant digit, but you know what, let's change that a little bit. Let's instead say that it's 2.0. There we go. We're going to divide 12.5 by 2.0. So now the answer will be 6.25 and the least of these between 2.0 and 12.5 the least of these is two significant digits, so our answer will be rounded to two significant digits. Remember, the rule of thumb is that the answer can only be as precise as the least precise data. And the least precise is that data with the least number of significant figures. And finally, when recording data, it's the last digit to the right, which is considered the estimated digit. In this example, that would be the 2.